Good afternoon and welcome everyone. This is Bill Richter at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. This is our regular healing service for Wednesday, September the 14th, 2022. It's a short service of scripture, prayer, some reflection on the scripture, and also a time of meditation. We hope that you find this a nice break in the middle of the week. And uh, I would cordially invite you to check out our website um, to learn more about things that are going on in the life of the church. I will put the web address up at the end of the service and our phone number. And if you have some uh, things that you're interested in and need more information, please call the church and we would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. It is always a blessing. It is always a blessing to have you here with us on Wednesdays, and we would love to see you involved in other ways. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, mercifully grant that we who glory in the mystery of our redemption may have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. In being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, the light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Cross. During the reign of Emperor Constantine, he converted to Christianity and passed the Edict of Milan, which made Christianity legal in the Roman Empire. Um, many members of his family also converted to Christianity, and he sent his mother, Helena, to the Holy Land to find important historical sites related to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. It is believed that she found the place of his crucifixion and burial. At that time, it is believed that when construction began for a huge complex of buildings, including the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, that a true relic of the cross was found. And archeological evidence has confirmed that this, this may very well have been the site of Jesus' burial and uh, crucifixion. Another legend is, is that when, when Helena was searching this uh, area, which is essentially a landfill to find the site of uh, Jesus' death and uh, resurrection, she came upon a, a patch of sweet basil in an otherwise barren area. And uh, when they began to dig under that sweet basil, they found the relic of the true cross. So it's a nice story and, and, and makes a good legend about the discovery of this amazing site in the Holy Land. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was dedicated on the 14th of September in the year 335, and it's undergone many changes over the years. 
Um, and this was a point when the, when the cross began to be celebrated as a sign of triumph and victory over the powers of, of sin and death. Early on, it was just still too painful in the memory of people to, to venerate or honor or celebrate the cross in, in any significant kind of way. It is a reminder that Jesus said, when I am lifted high up on the cross, I will draw the whole world to myself. We are saved by the cross and everything that it represents. We proclaim Christ and him crucified as a way of saying that, that the power of love and the power of, of forgiveness and mercy overpower and overcome the worst that the world can create. Even the power of death can be overcome by the work that Jesus did on the cross. This is not a reasonable or rational thing. It transcends what we can comprehend and understand. God has brought the power of suffering love to bear on the problems and the issues and the concerns of the world to, to move us to a place of forgiveness and potential reconciliation with God. If we're going to claim our share with Jesus, we need to walk where he has led the way. We need to take up our own crosses in this life and allow parts of our old life to die and to be born anew, to, to, to die and to rise again, move from an old life to a new life in the way of, of spiritual rebirth. Our reading from the Philippians minds, reminds us that we should let the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus, who did not count equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Jesus indeed was a servant minister. He did not, he does not ask us to do anything that he has not already done. Following the life of Christ, taking up our crosses, being willing to die to a life that is grounded in the ways of the world, to be reborn again in the ways that belong to, to Jesus and the kingdom of God are um, an amazing pursuit, a life-giving pursuit, and something to be commended to among all people. The cross is a sign of love that we celebrate, and we celebrate and give thanks for that cross and all that it represents to us. Amen. Before we begin our litany of healing, I'm going to invite us all into a time of meditation, contemplation, and reflection. The idea is to Surrender yourselves to the present moment um, in an intentional way without any kind of judgment or expectations. Simply focus on your breathing, the movement of air in and out of your nostrils as you breathe or the sensation of your chest or your abdomen rising and falling as you inhale and exhale. Thoughts and feelings may arise, just notice them and let them go, let them, let them pass by in order to be present here in this moment, to be still and know that we are with God and God was with us. I will ring a bell for us to start and the meditation will end with the beginning of the Litany of Healing.
a litany of healing. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear for us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Open us to your healing power, O God. We entrust ourselves to your care, knowing that you are doing for us and for all the world far better things than we can ask or imagine. With you as our companion and guide, Strengthen us to hope for all that is good and to fear no evil. For your love is stronger than death and your faithfulness reaches to the heavens. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and to the ages of ages. Amen. Now, let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. As we gather at this time in the name of Jesus, so may our loving God give you all an inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. May God relieve your suffering and restore you in body, mind, and spirit. May all of us in the frailty of our humanity know God's healing power. O oh God, give us such a vision of truth that we may not have patience with idle tales and careless gossip which hurt people and make their chances of life less sure than they would otherwise be. Help us in all our dealings with other people to be honest and trustworthy ourselves and give us that deep respect and regard for people which we have received from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.